Hi, welcome back. Happy Tuesday. Today we're going to take a look on how we can create a um, custom ID column for our SharePoint list using two workflows. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you like the video and uh, give it a thumbs up as well. And thanks for watching. Have fun. So as you can see here, we have, um, I have created a demo video list, which is just a normal SharePoint list. And I have here the title column. I created a new column called custom ID. This is just um, just a number type of column and a number of decimal places are put to zero since ID will not have any zeros. And uh, that's it, I haven't changed anything else. Everything else was a uh, standard. So, and um, we have also the internal ID column from SharePoint itself. So this is a column you already know and you cannot change and so on and so forth. So what we see here is that I have created a couple of items, uh, three, four, five, six, and as you can see on the right hand side, the ID, the internal ID, it shows that this is the, this has the ID three because this was the third item I created. I have been testing this a little bit, so I created item one, two, three, four, five, six, and item one, two, and three, and four, and five, and so on. They get the ID also one, two, three, four, five because. Uh, it starts from the first item and it just keeps incrementing. But what happens when you delete an item or when you delete an item in the middle, not in the beginning or at the end? And uh, what happens when you create a new item and that ID does not help you anymore to have that incremented uh, or, yeah, number? Because as you can see here, um, this is uh, item number six and it has an num ID number six but I don't have six items. I want the ID to be um, like based on the, the the item count. Maybe that's even, not even the ID. Maybe that's like an item count or something else that you want to have, like keeping incrementing um, based on the number of items that you have in your list. So I've called it custom ID, but you can call it whatever you like. You can call, call it number or incrementing number and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, just, just to compare it with ID, I call it custom ID. So as you can see, we have here four items and they are um, counted as, as here, as you can see, one, two, three, four, and the ID is a different number. What happens if I create a new one? Then um, a workflow that I've already created uh, will be triggered and it will populate this column custom ID. So let's call this item, I don't know, seven, and I'm going to exit grid view and after a while let's see after a while this workflow should run and my list will be updated and as you can see five seconds ago uh, it succeeded and this list here will get the custom id column updated so now this has a number five. Why? Because it counted how many items we have in a list and then it uh, placed then the maximum, that number there. So because if we have five items, then this will be also number five. And yeah, so this is how it works when you create a new item. But what happens when you delete that item? So let's go and delete one here in the middle. So this number three will now go away, delete. And we see here that we have the custom ID of the incrementing column, call it whatever you like. Um, it is keeping a number. No, it's going from one, two, two, four, five. We don't want that. We don't want to say one, two, three, four, because we have four items, right? So what happens now is that another workflow will be triggered because we cannot have them in the same flow since one trigger is when the item is created and the other one is when the item is deleted. So um, now the second flow will run which runs when the item is uh, uh, up deleted. And as you can see, um, the column custom ID has been updated and now we are not skipping any numbers anymore and it's incrementing as it should. So it says one, two, three, four. What it does is it gets these items, it uh, sorts them ascending uh, based on this custom ID because I want, even it's, if it says one, two, four, five, as it said before, I want it to be ascending. So I want the one to be first, second to be fourth, second, number four to be third, and number five, I think it was, to be fourth. Well, that's why ascending. And uh, yeah, uh, after it has um, 
gotten the items in the ascending uh, order, it, uh, we, have, we need to inc um, increment a variable starting from one. And then for each run where we update these items, we need to um, increment that variable with one. So one, two, three, four. That's all in the theory. So let's check out how we can do that in the practice. So because uh, the two workflows that are needed for this uh, to work are very short and simple, uh, we're not going to create them from scratch. So we're just going to take a look how they work and go through um, each of the steps so that you can understand them. So let's take a look at the first one, which is when it's deleted. So when an item is deleted from the list, how does that work? Let's click on edit. And we see here that we have the trigger. This is an auto automatic cloud flow. Uh, both are automatic cloud flows. Um, so when an item is deleted, this workflow will be triggered. What I'm doing here, I'm just initializing a variable. I've called it var custom ID. Again, if that's not an ID that you need it uh, or any other number, feel free to name it as you wish. Important is that the type needs to be an integer and the initial value is one. So what we're doing next is I'm getting all the items that are in my SharePoint list. And the important part is that I want to order them by the custom ID column, you know, which is this one here. And that needs to be ascending so that I have that you know, ascending order. And what I'm doing next is I'm doing apply to each loop where I'm updating all those items. Um, with the ID coming from the uh, from the trigger, yeah, so so for the get items, sorry, not for the trigger, for, but for the get items. Um, so the ID is from like all the items, and uh, the title as well because it's mandatory. And uh, I'm putting that custom ID variable. So on the first one, you know, as you can imagine, we get the items ascending. Um, the first item will get ID number one because our variable has item number one. And then after running once, I'm going to increment that variable by one. So the second item will get here the customer number two, the third number three, and so on and so forth. And this will run for as long as uh, we have items. So if the get items returns 10 items, the apply to each loop will run 10 times, and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, keep in mind that this get items will, will all this workflow will complain because of the get items not having a filter query. Um, it will still work, but then you will have to take care of other stuff. Like for example, in the settings, um, you have to activate pagination. You have to increase the threshold if you are dealing with a lot of items. In my case, it's a very simple and short list but uh, I can imagine that this uh, can be also used for longer and larger tables. So make sure that you keep this in mind if you run into issues with your bigger tables or lists. And um, yeah, that's it actually. When an item is deleted, it will uh, get all the items, see how many are there, and then it will increment that um, variable and put it in that column. Let's take a look how we can do that also when an item is created. Uh, we have the second workflow here. Again, the problem is that you cannot have two different triggers. You can only have one trigger. Uh, so we need to create two workflows, one when it's deleted and one when it's created. So let's edit this one. And this will trigger as I said, when an item is created and then it will get the items again, this time without any filtering, without any um, ordering, because what we want is to just see how many items we have. And we do that in a compose action where we check the length of the value you know, from this get items. So you have here this get items value, which is a list of items. And in there with the length function, you can count how many items have been returned. So if the item, uh, if this returns a number five, for example, that will be put in that item that was created. So when item is created, I'm using its ID here again. Right? As you can see, it comes from the trigger outputs and um, I'm editing the item that was just created. Everything stays the same except of the custom ID column. Yeah. 
uh, that gets the number of how many items we have you know, because it's a new was created item and that needs to have then the number of items yeah and that's it and that's how it works it's pretty easy and you end up having a column which counts and um, your items and then displays them in the uh, ascending order I can imagine many use cases we can, where you can use it or maybe just for a better overview and what you can do then next is you can hide this ID because um, maybe you don't need it. Yeah, that's it with this uh, video. I hope you can uh, put it into use and that it helps you. And if you did so, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, give the thumbs up to the video and have fun watching the rest of the videos. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.